All right, so I'm just going to go over uh, how I um, test flowed these injectors here um, without any kind of specific measuring equipment. Uh, just got done burning a piston. Pretty nasty. So someone actually recommended that I flow my injectors because the injector could be um, flowing less on that particular one than the others and since the wide band actually give the average of uh, eight cylinders if one of them is low uh, or not flowing as much as the others then uh, it would basically mask it on the wide band where I wouldn't be able to see but that cylinder would be running leaner than the rest of the cylinders so I uh, have everything hooked up here to the mega squirt uh, this right here all it is is Dixie cups and I took another cup and cut the top off and drilled a hole on the inside and I just set that in there that basically just keeps the fuel from splashing out out of the cup whenever the injectors are firing but I got it hooked up here on the mega squirt and what I'm gonna do here there it goes is I'm going to go to advanced output test mode and what I'm going to do I'm trying to go and focus here it doesn't look like it's going to focus is I'm going to select fuel pump on whoops actually what I have to do first is I have to hit one two three four five and then tab off of it hit burn okay now I can turn the fuel pump on fuel pump just turned off turn it back on okay so I got fuel pressure and now what I'm gonna do is since and high gear at the end of the track I'm running about nine pulse widths I'm going to go ahead and set this to 9 pulse widths and then for a number of injections just to give me a good amount of fuel I was hitting a thousand but just to show you how it works I'm just going to do 200 so 200 pulse widths now you can't tab off that because it'll go ahead and start filling up the cup so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my cups ready Slide them up under, underneath these injectors. Just let me get a better hold on it. Alright, so they're all sticking in there pretty well except for that guy there. Okay, they're all in. Now I'm just going to tab off of this here. Let's see. Sorry about that. So uh, let me try that one more time. All right. As you can see, the injectors are pulsing. All right. Now, I, I when I was using these, are 152 milliliter Dixie cups. And let me go ahead and turn the fuel pump off so I don't kill the battery. Okay, go ahead and close out of that. Turn the key off in the Camaro. Okay. And now the way that I was determining this, let's see, let me get the scale. So I got my scale here. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to measure my Dixie cup. It's 3.4 grams. 
So I'm going to go ahead and tear that on the scale. Goes back to zero. And I'll grab one of these cups. Take the top off. And stick it in its place. Now just for test purposes, I only used um, 200 cycles of nine pulse widths. As you, as you can see, it went up to 13 grams. Uh, whenever I actually um, tested it with a thousand cycles, it actually weighed roughly around 70 grams. And I'll, I'll show you what I came up with. Alright, so I did this twice, two different tests, just to make sure that I was getting the correct information. Uh, but basically, I just wrote down the amount of grams for each one of these cylinders, and I took the largest weight, which in this case was cylinder 8, um, right around 72.3 or 72.1 grams. I made that my 100% mark. And so what I did was I actually... Uh, divided 100 by 72.1 and that gave me like 1.38 or something along that lines. I used that number and multiplied every single one of these other cylinders by the exact same number, 1.3 whatever. And that ended up coming up with uh, the percentages. It basically converts these grams into percentages so that you can pair one cylinder against the other cylinders. And what I came up with is that number seven is my leanest cylinder. Uh, number eight is the richest because it has the most amount of fuel flow. And the difference between the two are actually only about 3.2% on this test and 3.0% uh, uh, difference between the injectors on that test. Now I'm not sure exactly if that's acceptable or not. It seems pretty reasonable to me that that wouldn't be a huge issue. Uh, but I'll just have to do some more research into that. Um, but whenever I, I keep burning these pistons, the ones that I've, I'm burning are number one, uh, number five, and number seven. Never number three. Number three is, has always been pretty good. And But if you look at these numbers, you can tell that number three, at least on this bank, is the um, is actually the flows the, the best on that injector, even on both tests for that entire bank. So I'm... I'm burning one, five, and seven. Uh, number three is the highest, so that kind of ex could explain why that would happen. There's a little bit of correlation there, but um, really, I'm, I'm really most interested in number five because this is the one that I actually burnt last time. Uh, the past time, that really nasty melted one that I hang up here on the wall like a trophy. That guy right there. Cylinder number five and this past time that is the only cylinder that has uh, Melted I did a leak down check and all of the other ones turned out perfectly fine and so uh, as you can tell the difference between Number five and number three is really not that much uh, on this 1.2 grams so 70.8 for cylinder five, 71.0 for cylinder three. On this one, uh, let's see, we got cylinder five, 70.7, cylinder three, 71.1. Cylinder number three is never, uh, has never burnt on me or uh, cracked or anything. Um, cylinder five always has. But the difference is less than a gram. I mean, it's got to be, it has to be, uh, see, I, I calculated it here. 0.6% uh, difference between number three and five. To me, that really does not seem significant enough to cause that, that issue. Um, but I, again, I'm not sure. I'm just going to have to do some more research on that and see. But I do have this engine ready to go. I just had to put the cylinder head back on it. But uh, the only piston I removed this time is number five there. I put another one in there and honed it out and some fresh rings. It's got a couple little gouges up there in the top. Let me see if I can get a flashlight. Maybe you can see that. 
But I actually checked it out this time with a bore gauge and it actually turned out okay. Yeah, this flashlight works. Now it might burn a little oil, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna have to check and see. You still can't really see that very well. But there's a couple gouges in there where, where I, I scrubbed it with a screwdriver trying to get all the aluminum off of the bore because that piston actually melted aluminum to the board just kind of welded it on there but since the aluminum is softer i was able to scrub that off for the most part and hone it out so that's pretty much how the injector tests work it's pretty straightforward i just did one bank on this side one bank on the other i reuse the same cup to tear the scale um, so it should be fairly accurate between bank to bank but since i am doing it bank to bank of course I, you know and instead of all of them at one time i really can't get an exact they're probably not as accurate uh, as, as that would be but I think this is pretty good and I'm actually since I did the test twice I'm pretty satisfied with it with these results uh, I think that this is pretty uh, gonna give a pretty good idea um, so I'll go ahead and leave it at that and goodbye